What's going on, everybody? Glenn Monroe here, the Roman Gnome, and uh, you know what we're doing, right? We're covering another phase of uh, the chanterelle harvest. Remember the chanterelle lateratarius? Lateratius? There we go, lateratius. The smooth chanterelle. And as you can see behind me, in our netted, remember our netted mesh bag? I have it hanging up here, and we're trying to dry these out because they have some debris on them. And in order to get the debris off, it has to be somewhat dry, so I can use a small brush. This is a toothbrush, one of those travel toothbrushes, by the way. We're using this kind of as a food brush. And, uh, hey, come on up there. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> so we're just going to try to clean these up before we we eat them because you know I, I don't mind dirt and a few pieces of leaves but uh too much grit seems to ruin the uh the mood and plus we need to inspect these and make sure that they're all of the same species there's nothing overly wrong with them you know and uh cleaning them out kind of helps and you double check your identi identification of them make sure they're all the same you know there might be one in here that could be a uh... as you can see I have quite a bit and I did try to do my very best of identifying these but there's always room for error but while I have you here and we're uh, cleaning these off getting ready for the uh, big uh, mushroom cook off cook out whatever you want to call it Walking with the gnome, see that's the next phase, we get to cook these. And uh, foraging has many benefits. I like it, it's fun, and but it's also nutritious. It's good for you. It builds up, you know, your endurance and knowledge, skill craft, things like that. But it also can be somewhat dangerous. Because some of these plants are not edible unless they have either been leached of tannins, properly prepared uh, from the correct season, maybe they're the actual right species because some of these plants have look-alikes and that can be dangerous because some of them don't agree with human beings and some humans are allergic to mushrooms anyway either because they have medication they're taking, they have a disease that this attacks maybe you know if you're suffering from an illness or something funguses actually like penicillin, penicillin's a fungus. Cures people of diseases, right? Antibiotics, some antibiotics are funguses. So, the main thing is to always, before you eat these, see that's, like I said, that's the next phase. We need to make sure they're of the right species. And how, how are we gonna do it? They're prepared properly. You know, they're somewhat clean. Like, you know, they're from dirt. Okay, you're made of dirt, we depend on dirt, I don't mind dirt, but there's just certain things that I need to, you know, have my food prepared as far as my preference, because I did, when we went and got morels, I ate too many and I had a food allergy for a couple hours, I could tell, my ear kind of, ears kind of swole up, I had a real bad headache, felt like I had a sinus problem, and my stomach was rumbling real weird, but other than that, it went away, because I ate too many. I'm five foot six. I weigh about 145. Okay, I'm a small person. I'm a small man, not very big. And uh, so I recommend, like I said, if you do eat these, like I said, uh, don't go haywire and eat a whole bunch because you don't know if you're allergic to it or not. But uh, these seem to be pretty friendly. These are the most widely consumed edible mushrooms on the planet, next to those weird looking white ones that you put on your pizza I think they uh, I did some research on these something about five million pounds a year that Europeans and uh, Americans consume of these mushrooms <laughs> but if they have dirt on them take your little food brush and clean them up and they look questionable just remember hey they're questionable looking then uh, don't eat it. If it looks like it's got a little damage or it might not be the right species, then don't don't risk it. Okay. 
But uh, here's some basic tools that I use to prepare these. I didn't want to clean them while I was, you know, getting them off the uh, off the forest floor because you know I was it was hot, sweaty. I'm hiking on the mountain sides, and then I have to ride my bike or hike all the way back here with them. And so I figured it'd be better to prepare them outside of the camp. You know, and then you put them in a mulch pile or something or spread them around another place that has oak trees because that's what they predominantly grow around. And then that'll give them a shot next year because they have spores and stuff on them. But just simple tools is what I use. A brush to clean them off with. Like I said, it's nothing fancy. I'm not a... I've seen knives with brushes on the other side for actually collecting mushrooms. I just use a basic pair of scissors. Wow, how complicated is that, right? But uh, another thing I wanted to touch on while we're here, and we're having this discussion about proper identification and preparation and uh, professional opinions and actually personal experience with using these plants. Um, I wanted to bring your attention to a couple of things real quick. I'm going to come down here so I can be more personal and up close with you. You know how I like to do it. I'm ready for my close-up, Raul. All right. First off, let's talk about professional, personal and professional opinions. Um, funguses, some of these mushrooms, I don't want an opinion. I want a, you know, a, a, I need some facts. I don't need a personal opinion. Okay, I need experience, facts, and results. Okay, so um, recently, I'm not. I like to do a little bit of reading and research, but not a lot. Um, I never heard of this guy right here. His name is Mr. Canterbury. I have never heard of him until about three years ago, because I wasn't watching a lot of TV or YouTube. I was working or traveling I didn't have time to use TV I, I'm not a TV kind of person I'm an outdoors guy so we don't use TV and YouTube so about three four years ago uh, I fell ill and I went back to go live at home with my uh, family in Texas on their on the farm that my grandmother has and um, they had internet I never even seen the internet before until about 2010 or 11 or a smartphone I think this is the second year I've actually had a phone that's a smartphone that does video footage or something. But uh, after the last couple of years, you know, I just been farting around with it. But I read this book that he had put out. I checked it out from Daniel Boone Regional Library because Mr. Canterbury uh, supposedly loves Mr. Boone. And uh, my opinion of Daniel Boone is not that high because uh, we're from here. My family, I'm in Missouri, Ozarks, God's Garden, as we affectionately call it. I'm in central Missouri. And, uh, we were here before Daniel Boone was, and when we have some issues with the, bone, uh, the Boones, the Boone Heads is what we call them. But uh, I've read Mr. Canterbury's Bushcraft 101, his field guide to the wilderness survival, and uh, it was educational. I learned a few things I didn't know, especially some knots. I like not, uh, using rope materials and cordage. Uh, there's some other things about trapping. I'm not a trappist. I'm not a hunter. I'm more of a uh, forager and a fisherman. That is my forte. Fishing and foraging. That's it. That's all I, I do. I'm a plant guy and I don't really like harming animals. Okay? But, uh... I read over the trapping section, the knot section. I did learn some stuff. But there was a section in here about how he speaks about... He's very leery of, uh... Funguses. Okay? Funguses. You know, what we got back here in this big bag. Maybe because he's not educated in that department. Or maybe because he's... You know, he had a bad experience with some shrooms. You know, maybe the hallucinogenic ones, I don't know. He seemed kind of like he's, you know, been around a little bit. But this is his book that he wrote. I checked it out from Daniel Boone Regional Library. I read it twice, front to back. And I, I like it. It's pretty cool. It covers some things, but it doesn't really uh, go over agricultural very much. Plant identification, because this is a basic book. But food is what you need. To survive with I mean the tools are nice you're gonna need some of this stuff but not really being able to identify and bring home food and prepare it properly is why you use this stuff in the first place right you're gonna need water you're gonna need food food and water 
everything else is just birds on a feather, right? But he said uh, in one section in here that he's does not recommend. Uh, I should have dog-eared it, but I didn't. But he does speak about how he uh, foraging. It, he, he advises people to stay away from the funguses. All right, we're going to get on with this part. But I did read it. Okay. I recommend it. It's cool. All right. Um, like I said, I'm not really big on trying to read things from a book. But, you know, I checked the guy out. I've seen him on YouTube and stuff. And, you know, that's my, my, my forte. And I like crafty things and, you know, things that are related to uh, outdoor stuff. So, I, yeah, he was on there. You can't miss him. You look it up, it's like, boom, he's all over the place. But uh, I read the book. I actually was looking for the one, uh, I think the second one he put out. The one that shows on the front of the video where he's got the, the fishing spear. Because I've never used an actual frog gig from Bass Pro Shops or k and I think that's what they call it, fish spear to catch fish. I've never been a bow fisherman. You know how I catch fish? With a line and a hook. Or a net. Basically a little trap. That's it. That's how we catch fish. Or we just, you know, go in there and noodling or tickle the trout, okay? We just pull them up by hand or something, or, you know, I never went and bought a spear to go catch fish. I grew up where Huckleberry Finn's from. I mean, come on, Mississippi Valley, Texas, Oklahoma, I'm a hillbilly, okay, Dutch at that, I'm like, Dutch, Irish, hillbilly, okay, yeah, Ozarks. Yeah, I'm, I'm really going to be making modern equipment. All right. But anyhow, I read it. It's cool. I recommend it. He says, shy away from foraging. Man, I'm going to eat, dude. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. See? He says, hey, I'm afraid of funguses. Well, here's my recommendation. This is local. I'm in Missouri, Ozarks region. This is Missouri's Wild Mushrooms. A guide to hunting, identifying, and cooking the state's most common mushrooms by Maxine Stone. And it's put out and endorsed by the Missouri Department of Conservation, which I don't really 100% uh, agree with some of their policies. But this handbook has not let me down. It hasn't. This is an oyster mushroom on the front. I've eaten these. They're pretty tasty, even though they're on the... Uh, <clears throat> Look at all these edible mushrooms in here in the back. The oyster, I believe, is a star, a three star. Let me see if I can think. Three or two. Let me see if I find it. Oyster. Uh, where they got the oyster at? I don't know if they got the oyster on there. Remember we had the jelly fungus? It's down there at one star edible. Hey, I thought that was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I agree. It didn't taste that well, but it's an ingredient in a dinner in a meal I mean yeah you just don't eat one thing you put it together you put it in a walk right walking with the gnome that's what we did we went in the forest went walking with me and then when we get done preparing in this we're going to be walking the chanterelles if you know what I mean so as you can tell here it has mushrooms by edibility category and these are all local common mushrooms and these people are all from here that's Miss Stone right here on the back she's got a uh She's a member of the Mycology Society, which is uh, the art of it's people that love funguses. And they know they're really knowledgeable about it. And they put out this book. So we're hunting. I don't call it hunting because I found them. I didn't actually go look. And I just, hey, look, there's a bunch of yellow shrooms. Let's identify them, remember? Unidentified fungal objects. Foraging, that's, my, that's what I like to do. So this is the manual or the handbook, companion book. They also have a website. Department of Conservation with a field guide for other plants native here and the, the, it goes with this but I'd rather have the book I got this from Daniel Boone Regional Library I checked it out you can get this for $14 I believe you can probably order it from Miss Stone or Miss Stone's publishing company or come down here and get one or don't get it from Amazon because it was $40 don't do it she even put it on there that it was $14 so this is $14 but it's Department of Conservation we give them lots of funding. They ought to just give me the book. I think that's how Daniel Bone had Regional Library got it. But, uh, 
anyway, it goes over some details on recipes, food, how to prepare them, identification, photographs, and slight details. And it's easy. Remember, keep it simple. Keep it simple, right? So let's go to the one that we collected, all right? We went foraging. We found some funguses. I didn't know about them. I'm going to admit, hey, I don't know everything. It, that's what, remember, that's what Mr. Canterbury said. He's afraid of foraging. Well, I'm not. But look at this list of edible choice mushrooms, man. And I just want basically five to ten. I'd be happy with that. And so we got right here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have twenty four star edibles. And then down here, the three, even the three and the twos are good. I've eaten, the, what is it, the oyster? Where's it at? I've eaten pretty much at least a dozen or more of these on these lists, okay? By accident or just by, you know, hey, it smelled good, I ate it, and I know that's probably not recommended, especially for, but most of the bracket funguses, you can't go wrong, okay? But make sure you know what the hell a bracket fungus is. But there was an oyster in here. I ate one. That's what's on the cover. They're good. Um, there was a couple. I had a dryad saddle. It says number two. They were good. I thought they were like three or four. But, so I'm expecting these to be off the chain. But look at all the large list of edibles that we have in the, uh, the fungal department. And they're weird. Some of them are just downright just weird looking. You know, creepy. Like, oh, I'm not eating that. But let's get on with the, uh, the the identification and the details and stuff. Let's get on to the good part. But they do go over how to prepare them, um, good the seasons, environment. Now let's go. We're using the chanterelle. This one's called. Dun, dun, dun. We'll go to the picture. This one's on. It shows you what they look like. Shows you the seasons. Okay. And the one that's we're doing right now is called the chanterelle. And look, there it is. This is the Guild one, the blunt ridged one, remember? Blunt ridged. Okay? The Sibarius. Now look at that picture. And then it goes into all these details about it's one of the most sought after mushrooms on uh, edible. But in Missouri, it's not the most common one. It's hard to find. These are actually difficult to get. But they do grow in Missouri. This one, which is in the same family, is a smooth. That's what we have in the net up there. That's what we've been after all the last two days. See? You notice my bag is uh, busting there. My bowl and my bag are busting out with shrooms, chanterelles. So here's the photo. That one's yellow. Ugh. And these are orange. Now, the book is pretty accurate. Okay, bright orange to yellow cap, wavy margins, smooth on the underside. Boom, we got that. Okay, and it goes into detail to tell you it's a four-star edible. Okay. And it says it's the most common mushroom in Missouri's oak history forests. Oh, it's oak hickory. Excuse me, oak hickory forests. Well, isn't, isn't that a part of bushcrafting? Oak and hickory, isn't that wood? Right? Isn't that the woods? Right? Okay. And it goes into detail about it's late June, early August. Well, it's July right now. It's, it's second, third week of July. All right? So they're the season. Well, look. We're right at the beginning of the season. We're doing good. Habitat, single to many. Very many in moss, leaves, grass, pass, and under oaks. Well, that's where we've been finding them. Goes into detail about the cap width, the underside, the stalk, the spores, the look-alikes, which is the poisonous jack-o'-lantern. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why Mr. Uh, Canterbury... Excuse me for a minute. I've got uh, rude people that aren't from here driving by. But Mr. Canterbury is... Because this is a basic 101 book. This is an introduction, just lays down the basics, everything. Well... I think, you know, if you have your forte of maybe some skill books, foraging books, this is funguses, and then I use this one right here, the Peterson Field Guide to Medicinal Plants and Herbs, 
and it's put out by Stephen Foster and James A. Duke. I've read this James A. Duke. I've read three or four of his uh, botanical books. And this one actually covers Eastern and Central North America. See I'm getting at? So if you want some reference guides for your area, that's what I recommend. Okay? And that will probably get rid of and dispel some, at least, unfamiliarity. This is well worth it. Uh, this book is $20. <laughs> I read through it twice already. I checked it out last week. I read through it twice already. Just like I read this twice already. I'm a pretty good reader. Even though I'm, I can't see far away, I can see about that far. And at night, you know, I spend a couple hours. Especially if I'm interested, I can blow through this book and... That's why I said I had to read it twice. It's so, so interesting. And entertaining. But educational, and it did cover the basics. And there were some things that could have been covered that weren't. And, uh... As far as re referrals to foraging books that's what I was saying I said well if you're not very good at foraging and you're a basic forager you're just starting out then uh where would you go for like I said I don't want a per an opinion I want a professional personal experience that's a factoid I want facts well this is pretty factual okay these have not this has not steered me wrong yet okay as I have eat we're gonna eat the chanterelle I've eaten some of the other ones, right? Let's see, which ones have I had? I haven't had that one yet. Let's see. There's the oyster. I ate that one. Based on their information. Oh, it is a four-star edible. Okay. Yeah, it was good. It kicked butt. I highly recommend it. Um, let's see. I haven't eaten that one. Let's see what else you got here. Golly, can y'all just stop it? I ate that one, the Dryad Saddle. It says it's a two-star edible, but I thought it was good. Um, I haven't seen that. I think I ate one of those on accident. It says the Cinnabar Polypore is not edible. I ground it up and actually I made something out of it. We had this one, remember? It says it's a one-star edible. I thought it was good after we dried it out and put it in some soup. Uh, so I'm pretty much eating like every third or fourth mushroom in this book. And I haven't been let down yet, other than the amount that you can eat before you have what we call, you know, hey, I've eaten too many. Uh, let's see. And the pictures are pretty close. The information's pretty accurate. I can depend on it. See, there's the uh, look-alike for the chanterelle. Right? But as you look closely and go over the details and stuff, and like I said, professional facts personal experience I don't want an opinion if you ain't done it and you ain't ate none of these I don't want to talk to you well the lady on the back has been doing this for years and she's been eating these okay I know there are a lot of people in the Department of Conservation I see those students all the time and they come to me and they're like dude you you, you have shrooms you know how to collect shrooms you know all about that stuff and they've been going to the university for a couple of years now. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I went to the library. And I checked out the Department of Conservation manual. Because we, we pay for this. Uh, in the Monroe family, they pay for this. Remember, they wrote the Constitution for the state of Missouri. The university is the school. We pay a lot of money for this stuff. We put out a lot of funding. We're agrarians. We like this stuff. We don't want to mislead the people. I sure don't want to die from poisoning. But, uh, yeah, the information in here is accurate. The pictures are good. I highly recommend it. Uh, I've seen pretty much every single one of these mushrooms in here over the last... See, look, they got some real easy color code stuff. Here's some charts. I mean, if you, if you want to shy away from some of that because you're not familiar with it, I can understand that, but... This will also help you if somebody eats one that you are in a situation, you're eating food, or the dog, or one of the kids. You know what I'm saying? Or you need medical supplies. Okay, this is, this is important. Well, your kid might eat one of these, and you're like, well, what the hell do I do? Don't eat that. They have places in the world that they serve these as food. Even in Missouri, people eat these. One of the locals recommended I eat one of these. 
No, <laughs> I'm not going to eat that one. Okay, that is, <laughs> that's a false morel. I don't know how you can confuse that one with the real one, because we ate real ones, remember? That doesn't even look nowhere near like a morel. But what we're going to do is this cool picture on the back. See, I got some mason jars over there, and we're going to dry these out in the sun on a net, and we're going to put them in a couple of jars, and we're going to use them for soup stock, but we're going to saute a couple of them up in the wok. That's what we're going to do next, once we get them all cleaned up right now. But I wanted to share this book with you. It's got some recipes back in the back. It shows you proper food preparation. Remember, look, the jelly ear. Remember the jelly fungus? Jelly fungus. See? It covers jellies. Remember the weird stuff that you see? Like, oh, you can't eat that. Well, they've ate it. There it is. The tree ear. See, it covers that. And I didn't even have the book when I did the tree ear. I already knew about that one. Because, like I said, I like Asian food. So, look, it covers it right there. It says it's a medical fungus. Right? Right there. See, it's got a little prescription symbol. But it's got a pretty good picture of it. It describes it. The wood ear has been reported to positively affect blood coagulation and decrease blood cholesterol levels. Since it is a very popular edible mushroom in China, it may contribute to the low incident of heart disease there. <whistles> now, are you afraid of funguses? The picture's good. I mean, all the jellies were weird and goofy, and I ate three or four different ones. They're covered in this book. But I didn't have this book. I just... You know, I'm like, oh, okay. But it's nice that they show all these edibles plus the medical usage. Or at least they give you an idea. You can study the chemical analysis and do all that scientific hocus pocus if you want to. I recommend this manual right here, this handbook. And plus they have a field guide online if you want to just go up there and browse if you got it like that. But I always think a book is good. I wish they would have made it a little bit more of a, you know, weatherproof because it's an outdoors book. I've already got the bottom of it damaged. But I do recommend the uh, Department of Conservation's Missouri Wild Mushrooms, A Guide to Hunting, Identifying, Cooking the State's Most Common Mushrooms by Maxine Stone and the Department of Conservation here in Missouri. Compliments of us, you know. Those weird people from the Ozarks. The Hillbilly Highlander. But uh, that's pretty much the book. I, like I said, it's $14 if you order it from a bookstore. Or you might even be able to get this used somewhere and just shellac the f cover or, you know, something. But I checked this out from Daniel Boone Regional Library. And uh, that was the other thing. Mr. Canterbury talks about Daniel Boone a lot. Well, where we're from, you know, our family kind of settled here. Our opinion of Daniel Boone isn't that big, okay? It's about that big. We have other people that, are, that were here in this area that were... Make Daniel Boone look like play school. All right? Plus, Daniel Boone kind of did some bad real estate stuff to the people on the East Coast, and that's why he was ejected from his uh, area. Yeah, you can look that up if you want to. But uh, he used to work for the Smithton Land Company. I'm a Smith, and he used to work for the Smiths, and then he quit, and he gave up all the information, and he tried to falsely speculate, do land real estate speculation. And misled a lot of German people and created a, possibly the Civil War problem with Andrew Jackson. Because he was selling real estate that he didn't have the right to. Okay, I'll just drop that. But uh, I do recommend this book. Uh, this will help you on your way. If you're in Missouri or any of the local, the locale states, the area, the region, you know, the actual region here. Somebody that's from here giving you information about something that's occurring in the region or in the environment that you're in. See, my expertise is the Ozarks. Like if you were to hear stuff about Morris Kohansky, his is the Boreal Forest. Or Mr. Canterbury, where's his expertise at? Well, he lives in Ohio Valley. Remember, he says the, he's the, right? The Eastern Woodlands, that's his area of expertise. Well, my area of expertise is the Ozarks and the Mississippi Valley. And I lived in Oklahoma for a while, so I know a lot about the Plains states, you know, the Plains area the Mississippi Valley, and Texas. I've been all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the southern tip into Mexico on foot all the way to Iowa 
and Colorado, and I think the furthest I've been is Florida, but most of that was just traveling. And everything else on foot is from the southern tip of Texas all the way to Iowa, up the Mississippi, Ozark area, and a little bit of the western plains through Oklahoma. That's my stomping ground, personally on foot. Now, of all my adventures, I think this is a pretty good, pretty good uh, pretty good manual that covers a good majority of the edible mushrooms and the lookalikes. So I recommend this. So you guys check it out, buy it, uh, holler at Miss Miss Stone or any of the Department of Conservation people, and uh, you know, see if you can get a 